let's talk a little bit about the HP 50G and Laplace transform. But first an acknowledgement. In this movie, I will solve the examples in section 15.4 of the excellent textbook by professors Alexander and Siddiqui, but using the HP 50G instead. In this movie, I will be solving the examples in section 15.4 of the excellent textbook by professors Alexander and Sadiku, but I will be using instead the HP 50G calculator. As usual, before I do anything that has to do with Laplace or inverse Laplace transforms, I go to the mode menu and in it to the CIS, to the calculator algebraic system or arithmetic system, I don't remember what is the meaning of the I, and make sure that your independent variable is x. I better show you. You go to the mode menu, this one, and in here the first thing is go to the number format, and I prefer to use the standard format. Why? Because it's the most economical with digits. It's the most compact. That way your Laplace transform or your function of time will be as short as possible and will fit possibly in the display of the calculator. Then I select the CAS submenu and in it I make sure that the independent variable is x. Why x? Because x is the easiest to type of all the letters in the alphabet on the HP 50G. I will be using x instead of s, the Laplace transform complex complex frequency variable and when the calculator spits back the time function that corresponds to that Laplace transform it will use x for time. Also in the CAS menu make sure that all of those radio buttons eight of them are cleared. If any of them is not unclear it with this F3 key. Now Important, make sure that you purge any global variable x that you or the calculator may have defined during a previous plotting. See the movie on Laplace and circuits? If you don't really know how to do that, there is an example of it in there. And we begin with example 15.8, this one. We're given a Laplace transform f of s of a function and we need to find f of t. I go to the calculator. As usual, make sure that the independent variable showing up here is x. If it isn't, I go to the mode menu. While I'm on it, I change the number format to standard if it isn't standard and then select CAS. And in CAS, I make sure that x, the independent variable, is there. If it is not x, click on F1 to edit it and make it S. Next, make sure that each one of those eight radio buttons is cleared. Right now, numeric is not clear. I use F3 to clear. OK and OK, and I'm ready to ask for the inverse Laplace transform. I type ILAP, which is an internal function of the calculator inverse Laplace. Check x is the independent variable. I use x for s. Inverse Laplace, bingo. That is the response of the calculator. That is the function of time that corresponds to my Laplace transform. Observe that the calculator is answering back using x for t. So x is moonlighting. It is the s Laplace complex frequency variable when I'm typing in f of s and it's time t when the calculator responds with an f of t. Let's write it. First term, 3. 3e three to the 0. Of course, that is 3, right? Minus 5e to the negative t. Minus 5e to the negative t plus 3 times sine of 2t. So far, that is example 15.8 in the textbook. But I want to give you a bonus. While you have that function of time on the level one of the stack, if you press the down arrow, the calculator will take that expression, throw that into the equation writer, and highlight it all at the same time. Down arrow. 
Why do I want to do that? Because I can press the redshift copy to copy that expression to the buffer of the calculator. I get out of there and now press and hold the white shift at the same time that you press F4 to D3D. In the second box, EQ, there you're going to write the function we want to plot, which of course is f of t. How? Edit f1 and redshift paste. When you do that, it will paste the function of time that you have in the buffer of the calculator. Type enter to get out of that menu and then press and hold the one shift key at the same time you press f2, Windows operation. We come to this menu only to select the horizontal range of the plot we want between 0 and 10 and the vertical range between negative 3 and 5.97 you say okay uh, why are you choosing those values for the range well 0 and 10 the horizontal one because you see the time constant of this exponential is one second so five times that is five seconds I choose twice as much to see how the function has established itself into a steady state. Twice time 5 times tau, 10 seconds. What about uh, the minimum and maximum value of the plot in that range? I don't really know. I just moved my cursor over here. And while I am there, vertical view, low end, I press the automatic key, the F4 and the calculator will calculate for us the minimum value negative 3.195 and the maximum value on the vertical axis 5.967 etc. Now we are ready. F5 to erase whatever previous plot may be in memory and then F6 to draw the new one. There you go. That is the function f of t as a function of time between t equals 0 and t 10. We see that in the first half of the plot there is a transient that disappears and leaves you with a very nice sinusoid with an amplitude 3, a frequency 2 radians per second and that is oscillating around an average of 3 given by this one. Next example, example 15.9. We're given this transform and we need to find f of t. I do the same. I type that f of s using x in the calculator. Make sure that uh, the independent variable is x or you will get gibberish if not an error message out of the calculator, right? And so as usual, make sure this is x, the independent variable, mode cis, clear all of those radio buttons and then you're ready to ask for the inverse Laplace I lab that is your function of time and the calculator is writing that using the same independent variable x as t and that is 2e to the 0 that is 2 this 2 here plus 7 times the exponential of negative 3t plus 7 times e to the negative 3t minus 8 e to the negative 2t. And that ends there. Piece of cake, okay? Example 15.10. Calculate v of t if the transform is given by this uh, function of s. Same deal. Write that as a function of x. Check that x is actually the independent variable in mode CAS, clear every radio button, and ask for the ILAP, the inverse Laplace transform, which is this one, and we copy it over. So e to the 0, that is 1, this 1, minus 14 e to the negative t, minus 14 e to the negative t, plus a ramp, 22t plus 13, that multiplies an exponential e to the negative 2t. There is that one. The next one, 1511, is uh, la pièce de résistance of the uh, section 15.4 is the toughest one. It has uh, a one real eigenvalue and two complex conjugate eigenvalues in that function h of s. The usual. I type it in, make sure that the variable, the independent variable is x, and that the radio buttons in mode CAS are clear, and I ask for ILAP. 
there you go. Well, that is a very long expression. Not so long. It's only longish. Let's start copying that. Remember, 2e to the negative 3t minus brackets 2 that multiplies e to the negative 4t times cosine of 3t. Well, let's go on copying that. I press the down arrow to take that expression into the equation writer where I have the possibility of scrolling, right? I will scroll that. The next is plus 2 thirds that of e to the negative, uh, where am I here? Negative 4t plus sine of 3t. So that is the expression I have, right? 2 times e to the negative 3t minus this bracket. Hmm, that bracket is an interesting one. So you see something that multiplies sine of 3t plus something that multiplies cosine of 3t. Sine and cosine of the same frequency, we can simplify that. Let's make a parenthesis here to refresh a little math topic on how to simplify an expression of a sine and a cosine added together when they both have the same frequency. Let's say h of t is the sum of a sinusoid with an amplitude a and a cosinusoid of the very same frequency with a different amplitude b. I'm advancing that we could represent that as another sinusoid of the same frequency with a different amplitude c and some phase shift d. How do we compute c and d out of a and b? You and I remember this identity from our high school years. Sine of x plus y is sine of x cosine y plus sine y cosine x. Let's apply that to this uh, right hand side of that expression. Let's write it over. The c sine omega t plus d is c cosine d sine omega t plus c sine d cosine omega t. You say, okay, what are you going to do? What I'm going to do is observe that the coefficient in this expression for sine omega t has to be the same coefficient for sine omega t in this other expression. So a has to be equal to c cosine d and b has to be equal to c sine d. Those are two equations. b is equal to c sine d and a is equal to c cosine d. Two equations two unknowns, c and d. No linear, but two equations. Divide them. Yeah, divide them. b over a and dividing c cancels out and you get sine of d divided by cosine of d. Does that bring memories? Sure, sine divided by cosine. That was tangent of d. So the tangent of d is b over a. That's how we find d. The arc tangent of b over a. The amplitude of the cosine divided by the amplitude of the sine. What about c? Hmm, for c, let's square both equations and add them together. Whoa, b squared is c squared sine squared, a squared is c squared cosine squared. We add them together, we get on the right hand side a squared plus b squared, and on this side that looks familiar. Let's factor out c squared, and we get c squared cosine squared plus sine squared, which is 1. So we get c squared is a squared plus b squared. Pythagoras, take square root and you get c. You get the amplitude of the resulting sine is the square root of a squared plus b squared. We could come up with a graphical way of memorizing those two uh, formulas, right? Sure we can. We draw a right triangle. On the horizontal side, we draw the amplitude A of the sine. On the vertical side, we write the amplitude of the cosine. And the hypotenuse will give us uh, the amplitude of the resulting sine. The phase shift is just this angle. Before applying that, let's write a little program on the HP50G. Either like this if you want to freeze the video and copy and type it, or perhaps on the calculator itself, but oops, uh, there is missing here a little something between uh, apostrophes and the make me attack. There should be a go to numerical value. So you see this one is missing on this typing. 
But in a way, you type that, you assign that to a variable, and then you run it. In this case, we want to simplify this expression in the brackets into a single sign. How is that? I can factor out e to the negative 4t, sure, and then I'm left with 2 thirds of sine plus 2 cosine. So a is 2 over 3 and b is 2. Enter that into the little computation or do it by hand. It's not rocket science and you compute that c is 2.108 and d the phase shift is 71 degrees. Remember c is square root of 2 thirds squared plus 2 squared and d is the r tangent of what was it? 2 divided by 2 over 3. And now you can write uh, that h of t as sure the first part, oh there is something wrong here, is 2 e to the negative 3t. There should be a negative sign here. Allow me negative sign here, negative sign there, that's better. Minus 2.108 e to the negative 4t, which was factored out, sine of 3t, that hasn't changed it, plus 71.57 degrees. And that is that. That is all I have to say for now about the HP50T and the Laplace transform, or rather the inverse Laplace transform. Thank you very much and I hope to see you again in the next movie.